Good morning. I don't know whether the mic's on or not, is it? Hello. Sonny, is the mic on? It's okay. Can't hear? Hello. There we go. Thank you. It's Welcome to the Bible cl class uh, this morning. Um, if I'm talking too loud, uh, Sonny can tone it down. Uh, welcome to those that are live streaming. Appreciate um, uh, you uh, being here and being uh, on live streaming. Um, is um, Ned here? Is he, is he going to get mic'd up? Um, somebody said yes. Uh, anyway, I appreciate um, everyone being here. We have, um, if you don't have one of these um, uh, comparisons of the, uh, or the uh, prophecies uh, compared to the New Testament fulfillment, um, there's some back on the last, on my left here, on the on the uh, back pew there. Um, if you don't have one, you, you would need one, I think. So um, I appreciate you getting one. Uh, Don, would you uh, word a prayer for us uh, this morning? study thy word, worship thee. Heavenly Father, we thank thee for all blessings in life, everything good we know comes from thee, and we thank you for everything good. We pray for our sick, our shut-ins, the ones that are ill and can't get out. Father, we pray for them, and be thy will that a portion of their health can be returned. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your son who came to this earth willingly, went to that cross and paid that ultimate Christ for us all. Heavenly Father, we pray as we go through our study this morning and our worship, everything we say and do, be in harmony with thy will. May we try to do our best at all times. Pray you forgive us when we fall short. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. <coughs> We've been comparing uh, Old Testament prophecy with uh, New Testament fulfillment with regard to uh, mostly about the Messiah. We said a number of times that um, there are over 300, they're in the range of 300 Old, Te Old Testament references to uh, uh, the New Testament uh, uh, fulfillment in the Messiah. Um, one of the most interesting uh, Fulfillment of Old Testament prophecy is uh, the the name Christian. Um, what New Testament disciples would be called, and there's a little background to that um, that I want to go through before we get into our comparison um, uh, on on the paper. Um, Isaiah the second chapter, uh, beginning with the first verse of the second chapter. Uh, gives some background on this matter, the matter of the the new name. Um, Isaiah two, beginning with verse one, the word of the the word that Isaiah the son of Amos saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. And it shall and it shall come to pass in the last days. That's the New Testament era that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow into it and many people shall go, shall go and shall say come ye 
Well, let's go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. He shall teach us of his ways, and we walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. So the, uh, the beginning of the New Testament era, the new, the new covenant is going to flow from Jerusalem. Well, let's, um, let's see how that plays out in the book of Acts. Um, in the uh, second chapter, beginning with the first verse again, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Now, who were they all? And they are, well, we'll find out. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and sat upon each of them, talking about the apostles there. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling among, or dwelling of Jerusalem, or dwelling, dwelling at Jerusalem, Jews, devout men, out of every nation under the heaven. Uh, that's an important point. Uh, Jews from all over the world, and they were scattered all over the known world at that time. And when this was noised abroad, the multitudes came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in their own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born, Parthians and Medes and Elamites and the dwellers of Mesopotamia and in Judea and Cappadocia in Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia in Egypt and in the parts of Libya uh, about Cyrene and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians, we do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. They were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, what meaneth this? And then, of course, some were mocking and said they were drunk and that sort of thing. Um, you know, they were, uh, those were the naysayers. Well, um, the point here is that Isaiah's prophecy in chapter 2 fulfilled in, 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 in chapter to, um, of Acts, um, the uh, the apostles uh, preaching there on the on the day of Pentecost. Now, uh, let's go to Isaiah the sixty fifth chapter, Isaiah sixty five. Um, we're going to get some more background with regard to this prophecy about the, the, the new name. Um, uh, remember there in Acts 2 that the Jews were assembled. There were proselytes, that is those that had embraced Judaism, uh, but the Gentile world was not represented uh, at that point. Now, in uh, um, Isaiah the 60, uh, I, I think I said 65, I meant um, 62, for Zion's sake, I will now here remember, this is language enunciated um, 800 years before the Messiah. For Zion's sake, I will, I will, I will, I not hold my peace. Now, for Zion's sake, will I not hold my peace? Sounds like God's going to be active here in, in this, uh, this matter. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest. Again, God is going to be <laughs> involved in this scenario. Until the righteousness thereof go forth as brightness and salvation thereof as a lamp that burneth. Um, 
So righteousness and salvation are are in uh, are on the on the, the the table here, so to speak. And the Gentiles shall see thy righteousness, the Jews' righteousness, on, and they're referring to uh, or referencing the idea on the day of Pentecost. And all kings, uh, thy glory, and thou shalt be called by a new name, which the mouth of the Lord shall name. Now, uh, on the day of Pentecost, there were no Gentiles, except those that had been proselyted and, and embraced Judaism. The Gentiles still see thy, see thy righteousness, and all the kings thy glory. And thou shalt be called by a new name, which the mouth of the Lord shall name. Thou shalt also be given a crown of glory in the hand of the Lord, and a royal diadem in the hand of thy God. Thou shalt no more be termed forsaken. Now, uh, under this new covenant, uh, a new covenant uh, and the kingdom was not going to be forsaken. Neither shall thy um, land um, any more be termed desolate, but thou shalt be called um, Hef Zebeth, and in thy in, in thy land of Ju uh, Beulah, for the Lord delighteth in thee, and thy land shall be uh, married. Now, these two terms there that reference, no doubt reference, those two names reference um, the, the era in which Isaiah lived. Now let's, um, let's go over to the 10th um, uh, chapter of, um, of Acts and um, discuss um, here, uh, beginning in the, um, well, let's see where we'll start. Let's let's go, let's go down to the twenty um, fifth verse. You remember, and the setting here was that uh, Peter was uh, Joppa. He had this vision, uh, and the vision resulted in him uh, going to the household of Cornelius, a Gentile. And by the way, how, about how many years had transpired since Peter's sermon on the day of Pentecost? From the time, from that time till the the time of uh, uh, Peter approaching uh, Cornelius. Jim, Jimmy says about eight to ten years. Now that's interesting, isn't it? Um, that the gospel was with the Jews. The Jews had embraced. Some of the Jews had embraced the gospel. Uh, and the word wasn't taken to the Gentile world for uh, a decade or so, eight to ten years. Um, now that's that's interesting. Um, that that there was that how much time had transpired since um, the gospel was first preached on the day of Pentecost. Well, uh, we know this story, but it's it's important to. To get this, these thoughts in our minds for uh, for what we're going to be saying here. Verse 25. And Peter was coming in, uh, and as Peter was coming in, Cornelius met him, and he fell down at his feet and worshipped him. But Peter uh, took him up, saying, "Stand up! I myself also am a man." And as they talked with him, he went in and found many that were come together. Um, <laughs> Cornelius had brought um, family and uh, no doubt friends together to, to hear Peter in, in verse 28 and he said to them ye know how that it is, an un it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or to come to one of, uh, one of another nation but God has showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. Therefore came I unto you without gainsaying, uh, without uh, waiting around, as soon as I was sent for. 
I ask, therefore, um, for what intent ye have sent for me. And Cornelius said, Four days ago I was fasting until this hour, and at the ninth hour I prayed in my house that, behold, a man stood before me in, in bright clothes. Apparently an angel had appeared. And said, Cornelius, thy prayer is heard, and thine alms are had in remembrance in the sight of God. Send, therefore, and then, of course, we have that scenario where he sent for, for Peter. Now, while in, skipping down to verse 44, Acts um, uh, 10, and while uh, Peter was spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell upon all of them which uh, heard the word, and they of the circumcision or, uh, heard, heard uh, let me read that again. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all of them which heard the word, and they of the circumcision which believed were astonished. And the Jews, in other words, were astonished. As many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. And they heard him speak with tongues and magnify God. Then answered Peter, Can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized, which were have received the Holy Ghost as well as we. Now, why should it have been so a, uh, such an astonishment that, that why, why didn't the Jews just understand that the Gentile world would be subject, would be privy to the gospel? Why were they so reticent about accepting the gospel? What did Abraham when uh, God's promised Abraham, what was one of the promises of a, to Abraham? Anyone? Pardon me? He would be the head of a great nation, but what's one of the promises to Abraham that's pertinent to this point? Everyone would be blessed. All the nations would be blessed. And through thy word, or through thy seed, that would be the Jewish community, right? And through thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Now, why wouldn't they connect that? They, they knew about Abraham. I'm sure they knew about the promise of Abraham. Why didn't they, collect, why didn't they connect the dots? Why didn't, they, why didn't they understand this? They still aren't. <laughs> Kathy says they still aren't. The, the, orthodox, the orthodox community, Jewish community, still doesn't get this. Um, Pardon me? They were the chosen people, but uh, in the original promise to Abraham, it also included the Gentile world. Well, they um, they have a, a mindset that's that's different than what Scripture. Uh, uh, identifies. So here, here um, now, Peter took a vision for Peter to understand this, but it just seems to me that, uh, that were, were these Jews, that were the teachers of the Jews familiar with Isaiah? Well, they should have been. So why, why didn't they, why didn't the religious leaders, the, the teachers, why didn't they understand the that the Gentiles would be, um, uh, you know. Well, surely some of them did, and they just didn't want to say it. You know how leaders tell you what they want you to know and do? Uh, maybe they just didn't want to understand it. I have a question. Why did they delay the eight and ten year delay? I don't know. That's a, that, that's a question for these preachers here. Mark, why, why the ten year delay? He didn't know. Tim, why have the 10 year delay? It was God's promise and plan for the gospel to go to the Jew first and then to the Gentile. Okay. And the Jews were specifically prepared to receive the gospel because the Old Testament had been given to them. Uh, but uh, it took a little time for the, the Gentiles to be ready. And so here's God's plan for it to be given to the Jew first, and, and that's really the outline of the book of, of Acts. You go Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and then to the uttermost parts of the world. 
there you, you, you've got it. But the question, I guess, was why 10 years? Why not 20? I don't know. <laughs> why not 30? Why not five? Pardon me? bottom line is it God's plan worked uh, because they they the, the Jews did of course um, but then some of the Jews rejected it right as the Apostle Paul some of his strongest opposition was from the Jewish community uh, so that's uh, but more Mark is pointing out that uh, even though Peter had the vision, even though he preached the, the first sermon to the, you know, he was the one that preached the first sermon to the Gentile world, um, he didn't get it because, um, as Mark said, at, at one point in his life, he, um, you know, he, he uh, Paul had to withstand him to the face, had to confront him with the fact that he was not um, you know, accepting the, the Jewish, I'm sorry, the, the Gentile w world. Um, and it's kind of interesting that, um, you know, most of the, most of the um, apostles, and check me if I'm wrong on this, most of the apostles, Jewish apostles, um, really didn't go to the Gentile world for a long time. Is that right? But but then, but then who 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 was the main messenger to the to the the, the Gentiles? Paul. Paul was the main messenger. Um, Don, I, I overlooked you there. So, uh, so then, uh, Don, Don is pointing out uh, it was specific instances where the Jews were resisting um, the, uh, the the idea of Gentiles being accepted. Well, let's go, let's go over there. And, uh, yeah. Just, just real quick to I think further an answer Nikki's question. Uh, the idea of the gospel going first to the Jews was part of the blessing. That God gave to them uh, that they, they were his chosen people. They brought forth Christ and this was the blessing that was given to them that they would have this opportunity first. Tim is, is pointing out that part, part of God's blessings to the Jews was that the Jews would be first to receive the gospel. Um, he had nurtured this Jewish community for uh, what? Hundreds and hundreds of years and, and that was one of the, Tim points out that was one of the blessings to the Jewish community that they would have the opportunity first to hear um, and any other any other thoughts Jimmy just think of Paul you know in Ephesians 3 said this was a great mystery and the mystery wasn't revealed the mystery was that the Gentiles would be fellow heirs of the kingdom and it was it came about in bits and pieces. It didn't all come at 
Jimmy is pointing out that uh, this uh, plan came together uh, and you said bits and pieces. It came together kind of um, like a puzzle coming together. Um, well, now to, to the now in in um, in this in God's plan, um, the, the the Jews were called uh, originally they were called disciples. Uh, what else were they called? Pardon? The way. The way. Uh, Saints. Saints. Brethren. Brethren. Sisters. Uh, and now uh, in the 11th chapter of Acts. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, the 11th chapter. Um, we have this new name introduced. Which would involve. Which would be. The label for the thereafter, the label for all the, the the saints, Jew and Gentile, and it's interesting that this new name that Isaiah talked about. Very interesting that it uh, didn't come. It, God's name for His people didn't come until. The Gentiles were accepted. Let's let's go to Acts 11, and beginning with um, uh, verse 26. the The context here is that the the large Gentile community at Antioch um, was meeting, um, formed a, a congregation in the kingdom. Congregation of the Lord's people, verse 26. And when they, when he had found him, um, now he's talking about here. Well, let's go back to verse 25. Then departed Barnabas to Tar uh, Tarsus for to seek Saul. And when he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch. And it came to pass that a whole year they assembled. Now they, the, the church there assembled. They, they got their uh, good footing. Assembled there the whole year with the church and taught much people. And the disciples were called Christian first in Antioch. And that was the, some people have suggested, so even some scholars have su suggested that it was the enemy of, of the church that named them Christians. It, it was not the enemy. It was this, um, God's plan as initiated in uh, the words of Isaiah, 800 years before that, that, have a, that God would give them a new name. But this new name wasn't going to be Jewish. It wasn't going to be a Messianic uh, folks. It was going to be and was Christian. And of course, uh, that name is uh, uh, identified uh, in 1 Peter 4.16. And it's identified later on in Acts when a person, a king that uh, Paul was um, preaching to said, almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. So three times this uh, new name is, is mentioned uh, in the uh, New Testament. Well, uh, so that, that, that's a um, very, very long period of time to say that, um, that Isaiah, the new name that Isaiah spoke of, is Christian, not Jewish, not anything else. It's Christian. Jimmy? You know, that name must have been popular for the time that Paul spoke to King Agrippa. I mean, why would King Agrippa say, almost you persuade me to be a Christian? He knew that. That's what they were called by. And so uh, uh, that name evidently Jimmy's pointing out that 
the, the name Christian, the label, must have been, must have permeated the, uh, the entire area because uh, uh, the period of time between uh, the, the um, narrative here about the, you know, the, the, the congregation there at Antioch and, and the time that Paul uh, was preaching to uh, uh, Agrippa, or he was on trial and he, he used that opportunity to, to preach, uh, that might have, that was several years. About 18 years. Uh, Jimmy says about 18 years. So uh, in, in that period of time, it, it became, the, the name became uh, well known throughout the, the region. Uh, Mark? I'm sorry, would you repeat that? Josephus and other secular writers of the time, the historians of the day, also refer to them as, as followers of Christ or Christians. Um, Mark uh, Meadows is pointing out that in the writings of Josephus, um, he, uh, in his writings, recognized that, that um, this, the followers of Christ um, were, were Christians, not Messianic Jews, uh, they're just simply Christians. So um, let, let, let's then go to our sheets. And I, I, again, if you don't have one, they're in the back pew on, the, on my left, um, the left center there. And last week we, we stopped at, um, on the um, fourth page at, at um, uh, the bottom very bottom. Um, and as we've said, lots of Old Testament prophecies fulfilled in the New Testament with regard to the Messiah. Uh, Psalm 8-2, and this has to do with, um, and, and, and it's, it's amazing how specific um, these prophecies were. Um, Psalm 8-2, out of the mouth of babes and sucklings hast thou ordained strength because of thine enemies, that thou mightest still the enemy and the avengers. And it had, that has to do with the infants uh, having um, a relationship with, with Christ. Um, so, uh, Ned, if you'll read uh, from Matthew. Matthew 21, 15 and 16. And when the chief priests and scribes saw the wonderful things that he did, and the children crying in the temple and saying, Hosanna to the son of David, they were sore displeased. And said he unto them, said, and he said unto him, Hearest thou what these say? And Jesus said unto them, Yea, have ye never read? Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings thou hast perfect praise. Yeah. Uh, how could, how, how could the, the connection be made except that uh, the, en the entire scripture was, um, uh, the, en uh, the entirety of scripture was God inspired. One author, right? One author, of, we, we got, you know, various men uh, uh, recording this information, but the scripture is, uh, the, the entirety of the Bible is, is authored by by God. Then on the next page, beginning on five, um, another specific. Um, now, uh, was was Jesus going to be universally believed? Well, uh, the scripture in the Old Testament says not. So, um, in Isaiah 53, one, who hath believed our report? In other words, you know, uh, who, who among the population had believed the report, the report about the Messiah, the Messiah himself? Who hath believed our report, and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Um, and then fulfilled in John chapter 12, among other scriptures, so did. John 12, 37 and 38. But though he had done so many miracles before them, 
yet they believed him not. That the saying, the saying of Esaias, the prophet, might be fulfilled, which he spoke, Lord, who hath believed our report, and to whom hath the arm of the Lord been revealed? So, the, the, what, what John is saying there, in fulfillment of Isaiah's prophecy, you know, who's going to believe? Which doesn't say they all believed. It didn't indicate that everybody's going to believe. Who hath believed? And then uh, uh, his Jesus' betrayal is um, recorded 800 years before it happened. His betrayal, very specific. Song, um, and possibly not 800, but um, at least several centuries before. Yea, in verse song 41, 9, Yea, my own familiar friend, in whom I trusted, which did eat of my bread, hath lifted up his heel against me. I wonder if there were signs that, you know, during the three-year ministry when the, the apostles were, were with Jesus, you suppose there were signs that um, uh, that he was going to be betrayed? You suppose Judas gave some signals? Well, if he did, none of the other apostles picked up on it. They didn't seem to pick up on it, but did, did Jesus enunciate during his ministry that, that he would be betrayed? He did. I, th I think he did. Well, and when, and when the lady was uh, doing his hair, you know, she was uh, using a perfume. You know, what did, what did you say? You couldn't keep that to something else. Yeah, it's, it's, it's in preparation for my burial. identifies the the amount of money that the betrayer would receive. Um, Psalm 41 9. Yea, my known familiar friend to whom I trusted, which did eat of my bread, hath lifted up his heel against me. And what does Luke say about that then? Luke 22, 47 and 48. And while he yet spake, behold a multitude, and he that was called Judas, one of the twelve, went before them and drew near unto Jesus to kiss him. But Jesus said unto him, Judas, betrayest thou the Son of Man with a kiss? Okay. And I, uh, we, we um, doubled up on that one, but let's, let's go to... Zechariah eleven twelve, and I said unto them, If ye think good, give me my price. If not, forbear. So they weighed for him um, my price, thirty pieces of silver. Now, how did it happen that it wasn't 20 pieces or 10 pieces or 50 pieces. Well, because it was prophesied to be 30 pieces. And so, uh, what does it say there, um, Ned? Matthew 26, 14 and 15. Then one of the 12, called Judas Iscariot, went unto the chief priest, and he said unto them, What will you give me, and I will deliver him unto you? And they convened and they convenient with him for 30 pieces of silver. Okay. And so there are more specifics with regard to his um, betrayal and his um, uh, ultimate persecution in Psalm 35.11. False witnesses did rise up 
and they laid to my charge things that I knew not. Notice that, they laid to my charge things that I knew not, that things that I didn't do, that weren't a part of me in Matthew, or Mark then, 14. Mark 14, 57 and 58. And there arose certain and bare false witness against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and within three days I will build another made without hands. Did Jesus actually say that? No. They misconstrued uh, what he said about the temple. Um, in other words, they, they accused him um, uh, falsely. And when he was um, accused falsely, um, he just didn't respond. Isaiah 53, 7. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before his shearer, before her shearers, is dumb. So he opened not his mouth. Fulfilled then in Mark. Mark 15, 4 and 5. And Pilate asked him again, saying, Answerest thou nothing? Behold, how many things they witnessed against thee. But Jesus yet answered nothing, so that Pilate marveled. His... Uh, in fulfilling this prophecy by being silent uh, the the leader of the Roman uh, uh, the, the Roman leader in Jerusalem was was astonished um, to the point of even being the prediction the prophecy being spit upon uh, I Isaiah 50, uh, verse 6. I gave my back to the smiters and my cheeks to them that plucked off the hair. I hid not my face from shame and spitting. Very specific. Matthew 26. Matthew 26, 67. Then did they spit in his face and buffeted him, and others smote him with the palms of their hands. And it was prophesied that he would be hated without a reason. Um, how, could, how could they hate the Messiah who fed the 5,000 and fed the 4,000, uh, raised the dead, healed the sick, uh, how? What, what did he do that, that caused them to hate him? Yeah. So he was he was hated. That's um, he was uh, oppressed. Um, he was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He was brought as a lamb to slaughter, and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. Amazing. Going to the, um, uh, and then amazing again, um, spit upon. Here's the Son of God being spit upon by mere mere men uh, just hard it's hard to just hard to, to, to process hated without um, reason and then we go to Isaiah again about his his sacrifice I guess we'll pick up there next week <laughs> 